Hey everyone, this is Celeste Pavlik and I'm going to show you a color edit on a picture that I took recently. And um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, this particular photo. This was taken with a Canon 5D Mark III and a lens baby with a Composer Pro and a double glass optic. This optic is a little bit different than I'm used to. It was my first time using it actually when I took this photo it was one of a few that I tried it with. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the slice of focus is bigger than the Edge 80 and the um, outer blur is not quite as um, blurry or uh, dizzying for me anyway um, as it is with the Sweet 35. So it's a fun optic to play with. I really liked what I was able to capture today of my boys. Uh, this is my oldest son, and this is uh, one of my younger kids. I have triplets that are five, and uh, my oldest is eight. So here they are just kind of playing around. A um, couple things. I'm going to do this edit in Adobe Camera Raw. I typically edit about 90% of my photos uh, in Adobe Camera Raw first, and then I transfer them over to Photoshop CS5 to finish off. Sometimes I use Lightroom, but I am more of a uh, Photoshop user, so I enjoy using it and uh, think that there's some really great tools that hopefully I'll show you something new today. One thing that I want to mention is uh, when I edit today, I do plan to change the color of his t-shirt. This is very um, much not a part of my style. Uh, when my children wear very bright clothing, I do tend to bring it down quite a bit um, in post. So you'll see me do that. As well as I'm thinking visually, I couldn't have them move over anymore to the right because uh, then it was there's no more wall left. So I think visually this would be a pleasing picture to add a little bit more to the right of the frame. So I will show you how to extend the canvas a little bit. And let's see, um, pretty much I think that's it. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, of course, this is my straight out of camera. Their skin tones are looking pretty good. Um, it's a little bit bright. As you can see up here, the, the green of this t-shirt is blown. You can see that green triangle there um, and a little bit on his forearm here. But my first step that I'm going to do actually is to go into my lens correction panel and I'm going to try to uh, correct some of the distortion here. I feel like if you look at the bottom of this wall here, it kind of curves. So I think I might just do enable lens profile. Um, there's never been, and hopefully I'm hoping someday there will be, a uh, choice for lens baby. But for right now, I just use Canon. Uh, if that doesn't work, then actually you can see here it pulled up Canon EF100. Uh, this lens is actually probably closer to a, uh, let me think, maybe like a 35 millimeter. So let me pop that back there and you can see how it did that. Um, it's still just a little bit uh, distorted. Let's see. I think if I go into my manually, there we go and correct my distortion there. You can see I can pull back just a little bit. Uh, what's that? What that is doing though, as you can see, is it's cutting off some of my picture here and up here. So, and then it's making my lines here curve. So I'm actually gonna leave that alone. I'm, I'm fine with it the way that it is. So, but that is an option. Okay, so I'm going back over here. I'm going to, uh, there's a little bit too much magenta in his face for me, as well as, like I said, it's a little hot right here on the forearm of my little one here. So um, I am going to just bring down the magenta just a little bit, and I'm going to warm it up just a little here, maybe like that. Uh, I'm also going to go into my HSL slider immediately. The reason why is this green shirt bothers me. I am not a big fan of super crazy bright colors. 
for photos anyway. Um, so I will go to my targeted adjustment tool right here, click on it, just grab a, a greenish, I mean a spot on the green shirt, pull down. Now keep in mind when you're doing this that if there's other parts of green, green parts in your photo, it will also affect them, but there's not here. So what you can see though is it's left kind of a weird yellow outline. Um, so I need to somehow fix that. I'm going to manually drag this yellow over a little bit, see if that helps. You do want to be careful when you start messing with yellows and oranges in the saturation that you don't start affecting your uh, person's skin tone. My kids are pretty olive toned. He's a, a little bit darker than my older son. Um, so I do have to be careful that I'm not uh, messing with those colors. So. I like this color much better. Um, if I hadn't showed you, I'm hoping that you would not even notice. I could go over here to my saturation and kind of boost the saturation a little bit so it doesn't look so washed out. Um, that's a little too warm for me though. So I'll take that down to about plus five. So let me go back into this HSL slider. One thing I want to mention is if you go to luminance, I like to play with the orange sometimes even the red. The orange with my boy's skin tone, typically if I pull it to the right, it's going to give it a little bit of a pop and make it a little bit brighter. However, in this case, this is a fairly bright photo, so I don't really feel that there's a need for that. Um, let me see what's clipping up here. Turn on my highlight clipping. Okay, so we have a couple hot spots here that we need to take care of. We'll come back to that in just a moment. So my orange slider, as I said, I'm going to go real drastic here so you can see what it's doing all the way to the left, all the way to the right, okay? So you have to, it's a very fine balance. It's, there's not really anything I can tell you that you would do specifically because it's going to depend on that person that you're editing um, their photo, uh, their skin tone, excuse me, for the photo that you're editing. So. It all just depends on your subject. I'm going to go back into saturation here. Um, I do like the color of this wall. It's very neutral and earth tone. I'm going to see if I can darken that just a little bit. So I still have my tat tool right here. And I can just drag down. Okay, so by doing that, sorry, dragging down, I'm making it lighter. By dragging it up, if you notice though, the kids' skin are also getting a little bit more orangey. So just like in the luminance panel, same thing. So you have to be careful there. So I'm going to go drag this back over to about 5. I think that's good. I'm going to next go over here to my basic panel. I really, um, I'm going to turn my clip, highlight clipping warning on. I really do recommend that you stay away from the recovery tool. Um, I have found that if you use it too much, it will start to turn your skin tones really grayish. Uh, so I suggest not going past 10 or 11. I typically don't go past 9. Um, again, it's going to depend on your subject and how much of the skin tone is hot, but just be real careful with that. So I'm going to keep it at 6. Pull down my exposure just a tiny bit, not much. And as you can see, I have my highlight clipping warning box on. There's a little white line around it, which means it's on. And uh, you can see there's no uh, clipping anymore. There's no blown areas. Um, this spot right here on his nail, that's his thumbnail, kind of bothers me. I'm probably going to paint over that or something here in just a moment. I'm also noticing there's some magenta here and that's pretty common. There's some magenta here. That's pretty common when you're using, uh, taking a photo that's fairly brightly lit um, with a little bit of backlighting or actually I think the light in this case was behind me. But uh, it's a fairly bright photo so I'm going to go back to my HSL slider and pull down that magenta just a little bit and see if that helps. Now, I have to be careful that I don't take out too much magenta from his lips, right here in particular. His lips are pretty pinkish, 
I can add a little bit of red. I can even take the tat tool, go over here. Okay, so doing that, as you can see, I'm gonna go back to the right over here. It actually is red and orange that's coming out. And that's why when I was pulling my magenta over, it was doing nothing. So that's just uh, um, something I have to work on individually then right here. Because I don't want to take too much orange out of their skin. It's going to make them look um, too washed out. So that looks a little bit better. Okay, so next um, I'm going to go to my tone curve. This is probably my favorite uh, panel within ACR. It really helps me fine tune uh, my exposures, my highlights, my shadows, highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. This is where I really like to get creative. Um, typically, I'll pull down my shadows just a little bit uh, in a brightly lit photo, and you can see it's adding a little bit of contrast. I'll do the same with the darks. However, your darks, you also have to be real, real careful that you're not um, introducing. I'm going to turn on my highlight, I mean, my shadow clipping box here, too. You just want to make sure you're not getting too too crazy uh, dark in some of those areas. Uh, the lights are probably the most important thing for me right now. And I could, instead of doing lights, I could change that back to zero and pull down highlights if I want, which are going to start to affect the bridge of his nose and the forearm and some of the brighter spots on their face. And if you notice your histogram up here, you do want to keep an eye on this. You never want to be climbing the wall on the left or the right um, it, when your frame is filled with lots of skin. Um, because if you are climbing on the right, you're going to, that means some of your um, brighter areas are blown. And if those bright areas that are blown, as I mentioned before, like on his nose and his cheek, then when you go to print it, it's not going to print well. It's going to print with lack of detail or maybe even a complete loss of detail. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so I'm happy with this here with the highlights being at negative seven. I'm going to take my dark set back up just a little bit. There we go. And oh, I'm back at zero. And I'm going to take my shadows up just a little bit. Because I do feel like this photo is, is meant to be a little bit more brighter and, and cheery. So here we go there. Um, my point curve. Now, you have some options. You can do linear, which would give it a little bit softer, dreamier feel. Um, very, you know, hardly any con uh, contrast there. Medium contrast. I like lots of contrast, but with the lens baby lens, you typically aren't going to get quite as much uh, in this type of photo with the light the way it is. Strong con contrast is there. And then if I start messing with these anchors here, then it's going to automatically switch to custom. I'm just showing you just simply for the fact so that you can see this is where you really start to play with those highlights and those shadows and all the tonal range within your photo. I can even drag out one of the anchors. If I pull up the bottom left, that's going to give it more of a matte feel. Let me pull that up a little bit. And that's actually pretty nice. I typically don't do a lot of matte uh, in my work though, so um, I'm not one that would pull it way up here. Um, I do like that in a lot of people's work. That's just a little too much for me though on this particular photo. So I'm going to pull it down just almost to the very, very corner. And I'm going to go back over here. I want to brighten that back up in the mid-tones. Maybe not too much. And if you can't tell, I edit um, all my photos. Uh, I do edit by hand, so I'm, I'm actually kind of just playing around. Now, I'm a hot, serious hobbyist. Um, I don't do client work. So if I had a session that I was working with a bunch of photos where it was really imperative that I get through them quickly, then I could go up um, over here and I could actually save my settings, okay? So that's important to, to know that if I was editing an entire session, you know, in the same location or what have you, 
I would probably uh, save my setting and then go through and, and make a preset so that I didn't have to hand edit and uh, do particular things to every single photo because that really just wouldn't make any sense to do that. So, all right, so back to my parametric curve. I'm going to bring the shadows down just a little bit more to add that contrast. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I'm seeing, what am I seeing right here? I don't know if he's red because uh, my older son had been, had his arm around him for a while or what's going on there. And I see a little bit of a green cast that is definitely from his shirt from before. So we can go over here and well, if I do that, I'm going to add that magenta back in. I'm going to go to my HSL slider, grab the tat tool. I see a little bit of green here. It's like really minimal. Okay, that's pulling down, that's pulling the orange and the yellow. Um, I'm actually okay with it the way it is. I prefer my skin tones pretty warm, so but the more I pull over that yellow and that orange, the lighter and cooler they're going to be. So I, I'm actually fine the, the way it is right now. One thing I want to fix uh, just very, very quickly is I'm going to go to my spot removal. And if you see down here, I think this is water or something. Uh, there's a bright blue trash can here and I moved it. And uh, I really don't want that water spot there because I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to crop it. So I'm go I'm, I changed it from heel to clone. You can do either one. Just sometimes uh, the cloning works better and sometimes the healing works better. So it just depends. You, it, you know, again, this is something you kind of just have to play with and see what works. That one did not work, it looks like. And there we go. And in Photoshop, I may have to uh, do it a little bit better. Just kind of depends. And there's a spot right here that's kind of bothering me. Bring it down over here. Oh. oh. I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's see, I think... Okay, you can see some of the circles. I'm going to have to fix that in, in CS5. Okay. And... Let's see... Oh! I wanted to show you how I sharpen. I typically sharpen in ACR very minimally and then I sharpen a, a little bit more again in um, CS5. I bring my detail down to 10 and I'm holding my alt key down and if you see I can't I can't put my arrow over here uh, while I'm showing you the gray screen. So look in this area while I have it on detail and you can see very 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 subtly a little almost like pencil outline of them I usually bring it down until I can barely see that masking I pull over basically this is just going to mask off the areas that you don't want the sharpening applied to and then my sharpening now technically I should take this up to at least a hundred percent but I know that this photo is not completely sharp because of the fact that I did use a lens baby. And you don't have that same sharpness that you would in with a regular uh, straight lens. So um, I'm not really worried too much, too worried about the sharpening or bring zooming in at 100%. I'm fine with that. So. Uh, one thing I also want to show you very, very quickly here, so the video doesn't get too long. Um, in your adjustment brush, 
uh, I'm not sure if everybody does this, mine does. Once you're in there and messing around with it, the next photo you bring in, these are the same as they were before. So just keep that in mind. You want to zero them out. Um, I want to see if I can play with the color of the shirt just real quick. See if I can get it maybe more on a deeper green. I don't know though without taking a ton of time or maybe even a blue. I like blue and brown go nice together. They're complementary. So let's try that. So here's my color. Here's my brush. Let me do, yeah, it's on auto mask. Let me see if I can Now this is something that you have to kind of work slowly with. Um, you can see if I hover over that anchor, the areas that I have missed, which are in here, you want to be careful you don't get this on the skin. Now you, I can go over here, do saturation. See now it's a little bit different green. I was wanting to go more for blue, so let me see if I can get that just a little bit different. This is not something I do very often, but it's kind of fun. Ooh, I like that color. I like that. I like I like that a lot. I think that looks pretty natural. It's not too pastel-y for a boy. I think that looks good. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. And the more I look at this, I feel like it needs to be just a little bit warmer. So I clicked on temperature. I'm using my up arrow on my keyboard. I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay. Uh, oh, and I had mentioned I'm, I'm probably going to darken that. Hopefully I won't forget to do that in CS5. So now I'm going to open it. Um, I'm going to open my image here. My mouse is acting very strange lately, so I apologize. Uh, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a background layer, Command J. Then um, I have created an action, my own action for this. However, um, I don't know where. Oh, I upgraded to Mavericks, that's what it was, and I've just never recreated it. Basically all it is, is I do a Curves layer, go to Soft Light, bring down the opacity. This is just giving their, them just a little bit of a bump. Okay, so that's at 4%. Then I go to my a Levels layer. I can brighten that just a little bit. If I hold my Alt key, I can see what's starting to clip. These are my shadows. I don't really need to do much with that. Here's my highlights. So not till 240 do I start getting the hot spots. So that's excellent. That's that's good. You can see. Just a little bit of a pop there. Then multiply layer. Go to curves and multiply. This may or may not be needed on this particular photo. Um, 
Okay, so I have it at 14% opacity. I'm going to add a layer. I'm going, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to add my layer. Don't want to fill it. I want to mask that multiply layer off of them. So I have my black brush here and I have my brush. I selected B. Okay. There's so many different ways. I mean, you may have learned to do this differently. This is the way that I learned. So there's not any one right or wrong way to do it. I want to go to my layer, background layer here, and grab my um, my burn tool. It's at 12% and take that closer down to 8 or 9. Set on midtones. And let me increase this a little bit here. I just want to burn that down a little. It, bu it bugs me. Okay. So you can see there's before, there's after. Actually, I don't even like it. <laughs> that color, it's very pink. I'm going to do a hue saturation layer, grab my eyedropper tool, I'm sorry, my um, little hand here, and it's not showing. Let's It is. I'm not getting a difference here. What am I doing here? Hmm. Okay, that's not working. See, I do so much in ACR that I forget sometimes. Ah, uh, I have to do something in Photoshop. Anyway, um, I see this big spot here bothering me. I'm going to use the patch tool. If that doesn't work, I'm going to use the clone tool. I think that did okay. A little spot there. And where was the other spot I saw? I mean, these are things that are pretty nitpicky, but this is the kind of stuff, I am going to use my clone tool actually. This is the kind of stuff that, um, you know, really helps you clean up your picture. So I'm doing Alt. I just want to clean up that area right there. And then this was the area where I uh, attempted to clean up that water that was still showing in the picture. And so I'm just wanting to clean some of this up too. Again, this is just with my clone tool, but it seems to not make such large, heavy circles. And I know I'm going to be cropping here, so I don't really need to do much else. Um, I think this is pretty good. I am wanting to add just a little bit of more contrast, so I'm going back to my levels layer. I'm going to pull in my shadow side here, add a little bit more contrast. I think that looks good. Okay, now uh, the next step is going to be I'm going to, this is how I save my files. I file save as because I want to save as a, a Photoshop a dot PSD. Okay, so now I have my save as. And I'm going to flatten. So I go over here to my layers 
button. Okay, next I'm going to click my crop tool. I want to make sure my width is set at six inches, my height is set at four inches. My resolution, I'm just going to hit delete and get that 300 out of there. Now I'm going to select, I'm, what I'm showing you is how to extend the canvas. I'm going to select the entire photo and then I'm going to pull up and to the right because I want to extend over here. It's actually pretty cute in the middle but because his line of sight is going this way and his head is tilting this way I feel like I need more room to the left. Okay so now I'm going to hit enter Hmm. Okay, usually this is black. I don't think it's going to matter. It came out white because I had my colors here inverted. Let me see if it's going to matter or not though. So I'm going to click, uh, press M for marquee. Your marquee tool is here. You want to make sure it's on the rectangular marquee tool. Now I'm going to select a little bit of this but also just barely go on the outside. You'll see what I mean here. And my, my mouse, I think the batteries are low, so it's having issues at the moment. Okay, so now I'm going to hit Command T, which gives me the little anchors. I can pull that out. And this is not going to work for every background, obviously, but because this is a lens baby, it's already smoothish, um, you know, very soft. And this is a fairly, you know, neutral, there's no patterns really because it kind of blurred out. It's going to, it works. It works good. Now I'm going to do Command D for delete. Now, here's the trick. This is what you don't want to forget. You now need to, first of all, put your 300 back in your resolution. I'm gonna grab my uh, first. You're going. Then you're going to uh, convert. Sorry, to 8-bit, which I have a little action for that. Okay, it says 8-bit right here, RGB 8, and I'm already set at 6 by 4, 4 by 6. Now, and I think, Okay, I think I like that. So I cropped it to my 4x6. My image size, if I was putting it up on the blog or on Click and Moms, is 900. I'm going to duplicate my background layer again. Go to Filter, Sharpen, and Sharp Mask. As you can see, I already have it set on 99%. Radius is 0.8, threshold is 3. I like that. I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to fill the layer so that now nothing's sharpened. Take my brush, I hit B. I'm just going to brush on where the areas that I want to be sharpened. Okay, I don't like the hair to look too crispy. 
I think that looks good. Change it to luminosity. I'm going to watermark my photo. And that is pretty much it. So you'll be able to see at the beginning of this article my straight out of the camera and my final edit. If you have any questions, please feel free to post your questions in the comments or um, find me on Click and Mom's forum. My name, username is Mama Celeste. Thank you so much. Have a great day.